commenting on the Infrastructure Act, the Office of Inspector General, Department of Energy, has said that, quote, history is clear. When money moves quickly, so does waste, fraud, and abuse. So the question I have is, is the Department taking enough time to review the grants to reduce the chance of waste, fraud, and abuse? It's not going to be pretty for them either. So we are certainly moving urgently because communities need this help, uh, but we're also trying to do this right. And with the IG, we are not only uh, trying to support the funding for our IG on the back end, but we are in extensive conversations with the IG, with her team. Any lessons learned that they have about setting up these new offices, these new programs in the right way, we're spending an awful lot of time and due diligence on that. Because it does seem to be of value to set those programs up before money starts going out the door. So we are in the position of trying to move urgently and doing it right. And so uh, we take both of those responsibilities very seriously. But we appreciate $62 billion is an awful lot of money. I came from a pretty humble background. That's a lot of money. And we're of zero. trying to make sure we leverage that as best we can. Yeah. As, as I mentioned in my, in my earlier statement, the Department has awarded this $200 million grant to Microvast. The Chairman mentioned it as well. Um, in its filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission, the company states, and it's right here on the board behind me, that it is under the substantial influence, the substantial influence of the People's Republic of China, the PRC. It goes on to say, our success depends on our ability to obtain, maintain, and protect our intellectual property rights. Very next sentence, we may not be able to protect our intellectual property rights in the PRC, the People's Republic of China. So this, this term PRC, this is the SEC filing. This is the SEC filing. There's a lot to it. The term PRC is mentioned 471 times in the company's filings. The term China is mentioned 110 times in the company's filings. So, you know, how did the department let this happen? Did the department rush the process? I know this is long, but did anyone at DOE actually do their homework? Did you know if anyone actually bothered to read this? So, again, um, we are in the stage right now. Again, no taxpayer funding is going to any of these companies yet. We're doing a due diligence review. We're making sure that everything that was included in the application was uh, truly represented. Any awardee, any potential awardee, that's the responsibility that they have uh, on that end. Uh, as a broader perspective, one thing, we are in a hole right now. Unfortunately, most of, in fact, the vast majority of battery manufacturing is in China right now. And a lot of that IP is in China right now. And so we have to have an eyes wide open strategy, spending taxpayer funding in the way that we all would want taxpayer funding to be sent, reasserting our leadership and trying to bring as much of that as quickly as we can to Chairman Manchin's point uh, here in the U.S. And that's what we're trying to do. Um, you know, I mentioned the letter and then you said it would be in my inbox. It has come in. It was dated yesterday. Arrived today on taking some of these selections for something like this. And to, the letter says, that we do a thorough post-selection risk-based due diligence review. After selection, you know, it makes you wonder why we don't make those decisions before as opposed to after the decision. Why wouldn't we assess the risk before making a grant decision on something like this? So our goal is to be thorough and diligent throughout the process, just to be incredibly clear. Certainly before we spend any taxpayer money, we go through a due diligence process with these companies that were selected to negotiate an award and do it again, do it again, and make sure we're being diligent on that process. And again, making sure that our intelligence colleagues are part of the process, our other colleagues who uh, have worked these issues for years and years. So we do this eyes wide open looking for our strategic interests. And I would just suggest that eyes wide open would have been before making the selection, before making the decision, when you have this to this level uh, and this kind of a history. I, I want to move on to something that the chairman also mentioned, which were, which were gas stoves. Uh, last month, uh, in an interview with Bloomberg, uh, Richard Trumka, commissioner for the C Consumer Product Safety Commission, said that any options on the table, products that can't be made safe can be banned. Uh, in response, the White House said the Consumer Product Safety Commission isn't banning gas stoves. Secretary Granholm called the story ridiculous and not true, she said. Well, I've, attend, I've obtained the memo from October 25th, 2022, from Commissioner Trumka. Notice for proposal, ban on gas stoves. 
ban on gas stoves. Here it is. This is the administration. First sentence of this, the need for gas stove regulation has reached a boiling point. You know, I would say what has reached a boiling point is anger against the Biden administration's insanity of proposing to ban gas stoves. It's, uh, it's astonishing. So who's lying? Mr. Trump lying? White House lying? Secretary lying? Because they're saying very different things. Well, l l let me be very clear, uh, and the White House has been clear on this. The president does not support banning gas stoves. The Department of Energy does not support banning gas stoves. Uh, we do do efficiency regulations for all sorts of appliances, household appliances. Uh, we have some pending right now, some for electric stoves and gas stoves. We treat those separately. And what I'm told, and we need to make sure that we're not talking past each other, Chairman, the, the, the nugget that you referenced, what I'm told, uh, these rules that would come into effect in 2027, every major manufacturer already has models, gas stove models, that meet or exceed the level that we're proposing for 2027. So again, if we're talking past each other, let's figure that out and make sure that we uh, know what we're uh, dealing with here. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. And while you're at it, please leave us a comment. Thank you for watching.